Say my name. Eisenberg. You're goddamn right. People have often asked, could someone really become a Walter White? Could they start murdering people? Could they start cooking math. Yes, it's possible. You need to have certain things align. Hey GQ, I'm Dr. Eric Bender, and I'm back this time to talk about anti-heroes. TV shows used to be much more clear cut. Who were the heroes and who were the villains? Now it's a big mashup. Let's take a look at shows including Mad Men, Breaking Bad, and The Sopranos. An anti-hero is someone that doesn't have the traditional moralistic sense or characteristics that we see in a hero, but there are certain aspects of them that we do root for. The three qualities that most anti-heroes display are narcissism, psychopathy, and Machiavellianism. Together we call this collection the Dark Triad. So let's look at each of those. Narcissism is the idea that you are super special and there's this pursuit of unlimited wealth or power you think you deserve extra admiration. Psychopathy is a personality construct, meaning that it's a collection of different characteristics. That includes being callous, being uncaring, lying repeatedly. But the one that is most influenced by the environment is the Machiavellianism. It's the actual learning to manipulate other people. And that can occur because of the environment you grow up in. There's an idea that an environment might actually make someone have to learn how to survive, and maybe they survive by whatever means necessary. Walter White. I was there. And I watched her die. I watched her overdose and choke to death. Walt becomes an anti-hero very early on, maybe even in the first episode, because here's this guy that we can identify with feeling badly for him. And he decides to cook meth. So there's the oppositional force to being a hero is that this guy is gonna start doing something highly illegal. Some studies on meth suggest that if you start using it and you use it continually, you've shortened your life by about 15 years after the first couple times. So he's doing something that really clearly is detrimental to humanity. Hey, Mr. White. Make those tires shine, huh? Oh my God. <laughs> You would not believe he's cleaning Chad's car. Mr. White. When we first meet Walter, he is almost a pitiful character. But as he starts to try to change his life, he does more and more amoral things. Murder becomes second nature. Lying becomes second nature. This guy becomes what some might call a sociopath, which means that society has impacted him enough for him to really develop these psychopathic traits. I think that's a bit too simple to say that. I think he had these things in him from the beginning. He had this idea that he was owed something, that he was taken advantage of. He starts to blame other people. And that's something narcissists do often, that it's everybody else's fault, it's not theirs. Even though he's not Heisenberg yet, he's on his way. Vince Gilligan, creator of the series, talked about the moment when he really thought that Walt became Heisenberg and, and cemented this criminal life was when he took the fulminating mercury and blew up Tuco's building. This is not meth. At that point, Walt does get some power. He even introduces himself as Heisenberg. So he's now this full-blown narcissist slash anti-social person. It's also interesting that he chose Heisenberg as his moniker. Heisenberg was a physicist who also was successful with chemistry and had lung cancer. So Walt's equating himself with this Nobel Prize winning person and seeing himself in this new light. We also see Walt's appearance change over time. At first the hair falls out so he shaves his head, which is very common for people who are gonna have chemotherapy and know that they're gonna have treatment that's gonna cause their hair to fall out. But he soon embodies it, and he's got this new way to dress and a pork pie hat, and he is Heisenberg. Walt and Jesse's relationship is very interesting. Walt has manipulated Jesse in many situations. I think that Walt has appreciated Jesse because he couldn't be Heisenberg without him. At the end, there's that moment when he saves Jesse, and that's Heisenberg digging in and having brought out that Walt part of him again part that could care about him as a person. There's a term in Greek called hamartia, which means the fatal flaw of a character that brings them down. Walt's narcissistic ego and the bruising of it is what his hamartia is. 
he opens up the case again with Hank. Hank goes chasing after him because he's, oh, you know, Gus, Gus was copying somebody. He clearly wasn't the genius. Walt's hurt that people would think of Gus as a genius and not know it was really him. Part of being a malignant narcissist is to hurt other people. We have plenty of examples of Walt doing that purposefully. He tells Jesse, I watched Jane die. Same thing with stealing Holly. I think in part that was because he wants his daughter, but he's also really out to make his wife upset. Please, no! 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 Let her go! You can't take her! Let her go! Please! Let her go! One of the interesting things about having psychopathic traits or even being a psychopath is that you can still love your children. You can still have moments. There is an interesting article called The Hidden Suffering of the Psychopath that talks about psychopaths really not knowing how to connect with other people. They're so good at tricking other people because they can see how you're supposed to interact with others, but they don't know how to do that. Walt has these psychopathic traits, but he does have moments of being able to connect. And he leaves Holly in the fire engine to be found. We can look at an experiment that actually might show us that this is possible. The Zimbardo prison experiment was an experiment run out of Stanford decades ago. In that experiment, students were assigned to roles of either prisoners or prison guards, and things had to be ended early because people ended up taking their roles so seriously and actually becoming those individuals. They became prisoners, they became prison guards. There was abuse of the prisoners, there were all kinds of character traits that came out in people that were awful. Tony Soprano. How about the fact that I hate my son? Like, come on, we're sitting on the computer in his underwear, wasting his time in some chit chat room, going back and forth with some other jerk off, giggling like a little schoolgirl. It was one of the first times we see a somewhat realistic depiction of therapy on television. And we see how people get frustrated with it. At one point he says, therapy's a jerk off. You know it, I know it. His therapist is like, I actually don't know it. And that's some version of something I hear from patients all the time. They don't usually use those vocabulary words, but they will tell me they get frustrated. When is this gonna end? What is the point of all this? What am I supposed to do with all these feelings? When we look at personality disorders, we consider is someone's interaction with the world around them vastly different from the cultural norm. He's ensconced in the culture of the mafia where we expect people to be violent, to do the things they need to do in order to get what they want. So in some ways, he's functioning quite well in that culture, but take him out of that and put him into the culture at large, his family culture, he is not able to do it. He doesn't know how to do it. And that can be for a number of reasons. He grew up in a family that was a mafia family. He saw his father take someone's finger off for not paying them. He witnessed a lot of violence, clearly. His mother was very argumentative, likely had traits of narcissistic personality disorder as well as some other personality disorder traits. You disobeyed your old man, and I ought to give you the belt. But I gotta say, a lot of boys your age would have run like a little girl. There's a term called adverse childhood experience or ACEs. Those are events that happen in a child's life, traumatic events often. Tony has a number of ACEs. If you go down the list and take an ACE inventory, very interesting to see where he lands. He's an anti-hero because he is someone who just like us is trying to have a family, get through the day-to-day -day life, trying to deal with things that are out of his control, such as his son's depression. He's really trying to do his best. We empathize with that, we can root for that. Tony really spills his guts in his own Tony way, saying he's got the world by the balls, but he keeps feeling like a loser. He feels like a loser because he does not know how to connect to people. He doesn't know how to go about saying to his daughter, let me be curious about you. Let me make space for you. He doesn't know how to tell his son, this is awful. Instead, he says, snap out of it, or you gotta stop doing this, you gotta do this. He doesn't know how to father his kids. and. Kids don't come with an instruction manual. In his case, the idea of getting help means he's not doing something right. He is not good and he can't stand that feeling. Don Draper. Don has a great line where he says, People tell you who they are, but we ignore it because we want them to be who we want them to be. So everybody sees Don as this charismatic, really handsome guy, seems to be in control of a room, can command an audience but he is showing us who he is. He is hypocritical, he's having affairs, he is somebody who 
doesn't treat people well, we don't want to see that. We see this facade of his. And that's often true with someone who can be narcissistic. You get an image of them that they've presented, but underneath is a real fragility. And that's what we see and done. There's this fragile nature of, wow, you, you really suffered a lot. It would be impossible to look at Don Draper without looking at his history. When he was a child, he was born to a mother who died in childbirth. He watched his father die at age 10 when his father was kicked by a horse. Later, he ends up being raised in a whorehouse in Pennsylvania. The closest that he got to feeling nurtured was when a prostitute used to give him Hershey bars if he would pickpocket the Johns and give her the money. Yet, we can't just keep that in mind and feel sorry for him because he does these things that are not really moral, that really are upsetting to those around him, that destroy the fabric of his family. With his daughter, he does stand up for her. He stands up for Sally when the mother's mistreating her. But at the same time, Sally has that classic line when she's in the car with her mother, who just offers her a cigarette. I'd rather have you do it in front of me than behind my back. I'm sure your father's giving you a beer. My father's never given me anything. So there is something broken in this relationship as well. Don had such a terrible upbringing that when he was fighting in the Korean War and his superior died, he switched the dog tags with that person and assumed a whole new identity. So Dick Whitman was no more on record and Don Draper lived on. Don is driven to never feel what he felt as he was a young person. And he starts to pitch the carousel to Kodak and he brings up the idea of nostalgia and with it, he says, there's that painful place. There's, there's pain, there's pain for him to think back. Teddy told me that in Greek, nostalgia literally means the pain from an old wound. It's a twinge in your heart, far more powerful than memory alone. At this point, he's already a philanderer. His marriage is not great. His relationship with his kids is starting to fracture. He looks at these scenes where he was important. He was someone, he was a father, he was a loving husband. He seems to offer some empathy to some people, but it's interesting, he can't do that with his own children in some way. He can't be there with his wife. He's afraid of this emotion. That's often when I see people come to me in therapy is when they've realized that their coping mechanisms are not helping them avoid what they've been feeling. During COVID in particular, a lot of people came in because they couldn't go to work anymore where they poured their efforts and that allowed them to turn away from things that are really hard to deal with. 